this video, I'll talk you through how you can needle felt your very own little Pikachu. Well, actually, you're getting two Pikachus for the price of one, as I'll explain how you can needle felt a sad looking Pikachu and a happy one. To start, take some core wool and roll it up into a cylinder as tightly as you can to make the body. Make sure that you have a printed image or a drawing of Pikachu that is the same size as you want your finished item. Compare your wool to the body on the image. It will reduce by about a third. Needle felt this all round to create a rounded cylinder shape. After I'd stabbed it for a while, I needed to add some more wool as it wasn't looking round enough around his belly. This is where referring to an image as you go along really helps you to get the body and the head the right shape and size. Make sure the base of your Pikachu is flat by stabbing at 90 degrees to the base. This is so that it can sit up properly. To make the head sit into the body better, needle felt a concave dip into the opposite end. For the head, roll some more core wool, making sure you compare it to the image, and needle felt it into a slightly oval ball, wider than it is tall. To attach the head to the body, take a scarf of core wool and wrap it round the neck, and needle felt upwards into the head and downwards into the body. Make sure you felt all round this joint for some time to make sure it's securely attached. Next, we're going to take some bright yellow carded wool and thinly spread it out to coat the head and the body. Make sure you needle felt all over this yellow coat to get a nice smooth finish. Once the head and body has an even coat of yellow, add two stripes of brown wool across his back. I'm using tops or roving merino wool here, which is slightly easier to hold in a straight line. Make sure you shape it so that the line is wider in the middle and twist the wool at the ends to make it narrower towards the edges. If you have too much wool at the end, trim it off with some scissors and stab evenly all over the brown to make sure it's attached. For the arms, roll two pieces of yellow carded wool in both hands so that you can feel whether they are the same amount. Spread out one of the pieces into a rectangle so that the width is the same as the length on your image or drawing. Also, make sure the wool is evenly spread out so that when you roll it up tightly, the wool will be the same density along the arm. In that way, it won't end up like this. Different widths and a bit wonky. Stab all round, rotating the arm as you stab to make sure you're needle felting it evenly. Check it against your image now and again to make sure that the dotted line on your drawing is where your arm stops being firm. Here you can see that the arm is too short at the moment, so I needed to felt a bit more of the fuzzy wool. Then make the other arm in the same way. To check they're the same length, hold both arms by the fluffy end and where it starts to get firm. Here I've added a bit more wool to make it the same length, leaving a bit of fluffy wool to attach it with. Spread out the fluffy end of the arms so that they're ready for attaching. Now that they're the same length, it's decision time. Because before before you attach the arms, you need to decide whether you want to make a sad Pikachu or a happy Pikachu. So for the sad Pikachu, attach the arms so that they're angled downwards and inwards. Stab the fuzzy end onto the side of the body and along where the arm is in contact with the body to hold it in place. So to get the arms level, you can also use a piece of cotton wrapped around the body at the point where the arms are going to go. You can use pins to mark where each arm will go. This also helps getting the angles of the arms right for the happy looking Pikachu. Needle felt all around the base of the arm to attach it to the body and repeat for the second arm. For the feet, measure two equal pieces of yellow carded wool as we did for the arms. To make the feet, I drew the size of the foot I wanted, leaving some fluffy wool for attaching and made myself a template. So lay out the wool evenly on your mat so that it's slightly larger than your template and lay the template on top. Draw around the template with your needle and then take away the template and fold over the excess wool into the middle to build it up. Peel it off the mat, turn over and stab it all round to neaten up the foot. I usually find holding Holding small items like this between a foam mat and a ruler or two rulers is helpful so that I can stab round the edge. However, this time I tried holding it between a foam mat and used a sponge, which allowed me to stab the edges of the foot without fear of hitting the hard ruler or bending and breaking my needle. This seemed to work quite well. It also stopped the foot from sliding round while I stabbed it. Just be careful of where your fingers and thumb are though. Make another foot in the same way and pin them in place to decide where you're attaching them. Then you can needle felt them to secure them to the bottom of the peak tube and take the pins away. For the ears, again measure out two pieces of yellow carded wool, spreading it out so that it's just slightly larger than the template for the yellow of the ear. Then take some carded black wool and spread that out at the top where the ear changes colour. I did this as when I made Pekano, as I call him, to demonstrate how not to make a Pikachu. I tried to apply a layer of black wool over the top of the yellow, but as I stabbed the black, it pushed the yellow fibres from inside the ear to the surface on the opposite side, which made it look a bit 
there. So as you can see, I folded over the wool from the sides and some from the bottom upwards and added it to the middle to bulk it out some more. Make another ear in the same way and check they're the same length. Then spread out the base and attach in the same way as we did with the feet by pinning in place. If you want to make a sad Pikachu though, attach the ears so that they're lying flatter. The happy Pikachu's ears are pointing slightly more upwards like this. You can check that they're level with some cotton and then once you're happy, stab all round to attach firmly. Again for the tail, I'm using a template. When I made Pikachu, his tail turned out very floppy. So for Pikachu, I'm going to use a pipe cleaner to give the tail some more strength and to help get that jagged shape. You can use the template as a guide to shape the pipe cleaner, following the angles of the tail. Leave enough at the base of the tail to attach it to the body later. Wrap some brown tops or roving wool around the base of the tail and start needle felting it. You can also use carded wool. I prefer to use pipe cleaners for things like this, as the fibres on the pipe cleaner hold the wool as you wrap it round, and it doesn't slide around the pipe cleaner as it can do when you use wire. Work your way up to about a third angle with brown wool. To make the corners a bit sharper, I added a small amount of brown wool, which helped it look less rounded and more spiky. Don't forget the angle of your needle is very important when stabbing this onto the tail. Keep stabbing at 90 degrees to the angle of each side so that you get a sharper corner. Then wrap some carded yellow wool around the tail, working your way up to the end. To get the end of his tail the right shape, I laid out some more carded wool and drew round the template with my needle. Then fold in the excess wool from round the sides over the top of the pipe cleaner so that it was encased in the wool and stabbed it all over. You might need to use the template again to make sure you have the right shape. Carefully peel it off the mat and turn it over and stab it until no longer fuzzy. It was still a bit thin here so I added some more yellow carded wool to bulk it out. Trim the pipe cleaner so that you're leaving a small amount that will go into Pikachu's body. To attach the tail use an awl or some scissors to make a hole in the back. Then put a tiny amount of glue on the end of the tail. This will hold it into the body. I'm going to show you how to needle felt the faces for both the sad and happy Pikachu as we go along but the placement of the nose eyes and cheeks are the same for both. To help you make sure you get the nose eyes and mouth in the right place I used a piece of paper to measure the height of the head and found that the nose is halfway down the face. So I marked this with a pin and used a piece of cotton to mark where the bottom of the eyes will be, a tiny bit below this midpoint. Then mark on the piece of paper where the middle of the eyes sit horizontally from the nose. And you can use this to mark with just your needle felting needle where the bottom of the eye will be. Then measure the height of the eyes on your drawing and transfer this over to your Pikachu. Mark the top of the eyes with your needle. So if you want to make the sad Pikachu, make sure you measure on the image of your sad face the height of his eyes as they're a slightly different shape and not as oval. You can then use these marks to help draw out the outline of each eye with just your needle. Make sure you refer to your image of either the sad or happy Pikachu while you're doing this. You can then use this as a guide later when filling with black wool. Do the same for the mouth, marking it with your needle first. That way if it's not quite right you can amend it. You can use the measuring paper to mark where the red cheeks will go with pins. Now take a tiny amount of black wool and roll it between your fingers into a small ball. Stab this into a tiny triangle shape for his nose, right where you had the yellow pin. Notice I'm using the angle of my needle to shape the black wool into a triangle. Next roll up two slightly larger pieces of black carded or roving wool into the same size balls to check that they're even and carefully felt these eyes into place using the guidelines we made with your needle earlier. Again I'm using the angle of my needles to shape the outline of the eyes first. Make sure they're a nice oval shape then stab all over. That was for the happy Pikachu but notice for the sad Pikachu that the top of the eyes are flatter and slant down to the outer edge. For his mouth take a thin length of preferably roving or tops wool in black and twist it to form a thin strand. Hold the strand across where you've marked the mouth and stab it in the centre under his nose. Then holding the wool along the needle mark stab the mouth into place. Trim the excess wool from the ends of the mouth and go back over the mouth to neaten it up. The sad Pikachu's mouth is slightly smaller and simpler than the happy Pikachu, just two short lines. But for the inside of the mouth for the happy Pikachu I used carded wool in dark pink and light pink. Guide the wool into place with your needle, again following the outline we made earlier, just covering the top half of the mouth area with the dark pink. Then roll some lighter pink wool between your fingers and shape into a rounded tongue area. To make his rosy cheeks, stab with your needle a circle around the pin to outline where you're going to fill in with red carded wool, in the same way as we did for the eyes. Next we're going to add a bit of highlight to the eyes that will make Pikachu come alive. Take two tiny pieces of white wool and roll them in your fingers in both hands to get them the same size. Then stab them towards the top of the eyes. When you look at an image of Pikachu, the white highlight is often placed so that he looks almost slightly <coughs> cross-eyed. No, not quite that cross-eyed. For the sad Pikachu, I added another tiny bit of wool at the bottom of each eye, as this was 
was on the image I was using. It almost looks like he's crying. Oh. And if you'd like some tips on improving your needle felting skills, click here. If you found this video helpful, I'd really appreciate it if you went ahead and clicked that like button. Thanks for watching.